Yes, this is the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico, a land of song and laughter, a tiny bit of the United States in the warm seas of the Atlantic and the Caribbean. San Juan, capital of the island, was an important city a hundred years before the pilgrims landed at Plymouth Rock. Today it is the air crossroads of the Western Hemisphere. Walk down any street in this 400-year-old city, you'll hear staccato Spanish, you'll see Spanish signs. Every square block presents a sharp contrast between old Spain and Main Street, USA. Columbus discovered Puerto Rico in 1493. This is La Fortaleza, Puerto Rico's White House, built in 1533 as a Spanish fortress. Today, the flag of the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico waves proudly beside Old Glory. If you're in a hurry, high-flying constellations get you to San Juan in about six hours from New York or four hours from Miami. Low fare tourist flights are available, too. You land right in the heart of San Juan, only a few minutes away from the hotels and beaches. There are no customs barriers. The U.S. dollar or dime is standard currency. They call this San Juan's Gold Coast, the center of its resort hotels, casinos, and nightlife. Here is the Condado Beach Hotel with its private oceanfront beach club. It's a vacation paradise 12 months of the year. Breathtakingly beautiful, a gem in the tropics, the fabulous Cariba Hilton Hotel. Even the approaches are modern. Every room is air-conditioned. Here truly is living fit for a king. A hotel bathed in sunshine and splendor, with its private bathing lagoon, swimming pool, and elaborate recreational facilities. Most popular historical attraction in San Juan is El Moro. It is the largest Spanish fort on American soil. More than 30,000 tourists visit it each year. French, Dutch, and British buccaneers tried vainly to capture it. 400 years ago, people were dependent upon this fort for protection. The Spanish built it to guard against sea raiders, and in the last war, it was armed against submarine attacks. Golf in a fort? Well, seeing is believing. The El Moro course is one of the sportiest on the island. Broad avenues in San Juan lead to residential districts where houses resemble those in Florida, California, or Texas. Puerto Rican architects designed all these homes for real comfortable living. Everybody grows and loves flowers in Puerto Rico. These are red ginger blossoms. Let's take a trip over modern concrete highways into the country. Much of Puerto Rico's charm lies in her agriculture. In the warm uplands near Manatee are extensive pineapple plantations. Say, this is easier than opening a can of pineapple. You can see harvests like this everywhere in the Pina country. Just stop your car and watch. Yum, yum. Juicy Spanish red pineapple is the sweetest of all. Sugar cane, backbone of the island's economy, it grows everywhere and brings in around $150 million annually. Over a million tons each year are shipped to stateside markets. The harvest season is from January to June, a 
a sight that tourists never forget. Third largest city on the island is Mayaguez, a typical Spanish colonial community of 60,000 people. Thirteen miles away is San Germán. Puerto Rico, as you can see, is small, averaging 35 miles wide and 100 miles long. Diego Colón, brother of Columbus the discoverer, named San Germán in honor of King Ferdinand's wife. Here is Porticelli, built four centuries ago by Dominican monks. La Parguera is on the south coast of Puerto Rico, on the Caribbean. Spanish conquistadores planted many of these shade trees covering the roads to make their journey on horseback cool and comfortable. Fishing is the main attraction at La Parguera. Here, life is simple and unhurried. One of the most amazing tourist attractions in all Puerto Rico is the phosphorescent bay here in Parguera. At night, a trail of white light follows the wake of your boat, a sight you will never forget. But if you want contrast, you'll find it here in Ponce. Here's the city, seen from a hill. As in traditional Spanish colonial cities, Ponce started with its cathedral and plaza. It's the second largest city in Puerto Rico, a proud stronghold of old customs and culture, and it retains much of the charm lost to progress in other parts of the world. Ponce was named for Juan Ponce de Leon, seeker of the Fountain of Youth and Puerto Rico's first governor. Ponce's fire department is both original and strictly traditional. Members are volunteers, but ready at the sound of the bell for anything. There they go in a blaze of color. It could be a fire, but it's only practice. We're on our way from Ponce across the mountains, from the Caribbean Sea to the Atlantic Ocean. This is one of the most spectacular trips anywhere on the island and takes just a few hours. It's really chilly up here in the evening. This part of Puerto Rico is today the same as when it was discovered by the Spanish. Bananas, too, grow wild in the El Yunque forest. Until you've eaten one ripened on the plant, you've never really tasted bananas. Near the summit is a recreation area and a swimming pool. The water couldn't be purer. Down the mountain we go to Liquidio Beach, near the base of El Yunque. You're there in about half an hour. What a beach! And say, it looks like we're in time for a fiesta, a big one. Yes, it's a pig roast or lechonada. Typically Puerto Rican, and with all the fixings. Coconut milk is always a popular drink. Cool and refreshing. The lechonada is just about as old as the history of Puerto Rico. It happens every day on the island, in every village, and in the cities, too. They say they even roast the squeal and it takes hours to prepare, even by an expert. Mm, and I mean it. dancers perform the bomba. The rhythmic drum music rings in your ears long after you've left the island.
we're on our way home. The magic of Fiesta Island will haunt you long after you've passed El Moro. Someday you'll return. Nobody here says goodbye, only hasta luego.